<laughs> I think that makes it very clear <laughs> that this is a man who doesn't need too much of, a, of an introduction. Eric, it's lovely to have you here. And you're here as well to, to deliver some news for us this afternoon. Yeah, to, to uh, welcome a, a new member to the Common Goal family. So before we do that, before you, you tell us that piece of news, I wanted to ask you, Jürgen, if you can briefly give an idea to everybody of what it ex is exactly that, that, that Common Goal does. What, what is the aims of, of Common Goal? Yeah, sure. So you had already a, a quick introduction of before we actually enter the stage, but there is like a football for good movement out there for 20 years, which is community based organizations that are using football as a tool to change the reality around themselves in their communities. Um, 20 years into that, we just thought, OK, there's football for good here and there's football for profit there. We should build a, a systemic bridge and common goal has been the answer to that. So it's a prof professional athletes driven movement. Um, it's now 135 of them and they pledge 1% of their earnings, um, which obviously the end game is that the whole industry will do that. So before we go on then, Eric, if you'd like to announce who the newest member of Common Goal is. Yeah, I would like to welcome on stage Ignola Aluko. Here she comes. Yeah, good. Yeah. Any, lovely to have you here. Lovely to be here. So Eni's played more than 100 times for England. Juventus title winner this year. Yes. Chiellini, the title winner, Supercoppa. I should never leave Coppa anything out. <laughs> <laughs> never, never stop short. The, the captain, of course, of the Juventus men's team is, is Giorgio Chiellini, who was the fifth member, I believe, Jürgen, of, of Common Goal. Sure. So 130 players later, you're the 135th member. Why? What was it that, 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 that led you to, to join this project? Well, for me, I've always, been, um, I've always been somebody that recognizes the power of being a footballer, the, the platform that we have to really affect people around the world, people that I don't even know. Um, and the idea of collective philanthropy, the idea of a collective team of players that do that is very natural, I think, to what I've been part of my whole life. I've been part of teams my whole life. Um, and I'm very passionate in particular about um, clean water, about the empowerment of women, empowerment of young girls, um, which is aligns with some of the things that Common Goal are doing. So it's, it's, it's being part of a player group, but also being part of a platform that is using footballers to do good in the world. As you say, there's the, the, the passion for the empowerment of women. One of the most interesting things, I think, about what Common Goal have done so far is that more than 50% of the footballers who've joined are women. Do you think there's a, a particular reason for that? Is there, is there a reason this project attracts female footballers perhaps even more than, than male footballers? Well, I think in the last five years, you've seen a real um, renaissance, if you like, or a real resurgence of women all around the world really finding our voice and really finding our voice for change. Um, that's no different in the women's game, whether it's individually or collectively, it's almost like women are saying, okay, like it's time to push for change, for improvement for our game. Um, and we're just, a lot of us are just really nice people and we, we care about um, important things around the world that doesn't necessarily affect our football every day, but we know that we can impact. So. I'm really um, inspired, actually, that 50% of the women, 50% uh, of the collective at Common Goal are women. And that makes me feel very empowered that we can just keep pushing and keep um, using football for, for change and for good. And obviously, you've spoken to, the, to the, all the players who, who've joined up. Is there something in what any saying that, that tallies with you in, in terms of the, the mindset of, of, of women players when they join up? Is there a difference between women and men's players? Is there a reason why so many women's player, players are getting in board? Yeah, I think I'm just echoing also what Annie just said, but there is something special to female leadership in general. I don't think that that's just in football, but actually also beyond. There's more of an inclusive approach, more of a, a collective approach instead of me first, which is probably more of the experience we have had so far 
um, with some of the environments around male players. Um, the other thing I think, and any, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like you women in, in the game, you had to fight a lot for the yeah. space you now have. So you're much more used to fight for your right and you know what fight looks like. Um, so you feel probably also more appetite to get behind a collective endeavor to actually embed responsibility back in the game of football. So, and the, uh, the third thing I would mention, it's just easier to access female players than it is to access male players because you're yeah, the, your game is still more accessible, more yeah, and more grounded, um, as opposed to the bubble in which the male game is moving itself. Is there, a, I mean, genuinely, then, is is there a problem with gatekeepers to the male's game? Is there a problem of getting to them to actually be able to propose face to face that they become involved in this? Yeah, it's it's yeah. I don't want to generalize here because obviously every player is his in talking about male players his own universe, but generalizing, there is a lot of protection around the male players, which wouldn't allow actually to have a conversation with the players, being it family, being it agents, being it clubs or other advisors. Um, once we are in a situation to speak to a player like face to face, it is actually like 95% of them would join Common Goal. Right. If we don't get into that position, it's probably less than 10%. That, that actually gets through to the player. You talked a lot, obviously, about this being a collective project. And Eric, you've always been very much your own man, always seen as someone different to, to other footballers. But you've become involved in a, in a collective project. Why is that? What, what is it that attracts you to it? Makes you think it can really work? Because we can use uh, football for many things, you know. Use, we see now some players or ex-players supporting... Uh, a candidate from uh, extreme right wing, you know, you see uh, fun, racist uh, chant uh, using football to, to promote uh, the idea of the extreme right wing. Uh, I think we live in a, in, in a crazy world and uh, the, the players, we should encourage the player during the career to see uh, the world around them, to realize it. But what the people expect, it's them to play well, so they can play, they can play, they play well. Okay, they don't want to speak, no problem, but at least they know what's happened around them. And uh, instead of using the fame, their fame, and to, to support this kind of uh, politics, I think they should go to the poor area and try to, uh, to, to, to use football to encourage the, the, young, the young guys. For instance, I was in Cartagena a few years ago uh, a bit outside of Cartagena and um, very, very, very poor area, very poor area. And it was a, a, a football pitch uh, created. And uh, I asked if a lot of kids were playing there. He said yes. But uh, he said to me, to play football, first they have to go to school. And if they work well at school, they can play football. And the kid went to school and work out of school and then we're allowed to play football and they enjoy football because they love football of course maybe none of them will become professional or maybe one but for the rest of them at least they will have been to school and it will help them for the rest of their life and it's what common god does this kind of thing and i think it's very very important the power of football is, uh, is very important. Well, that's the key, is that it's, it's the power of the game that enables it to reach places perhaps that, that other spheres of life wouldn't reach. I don't, know if, I don't know if there's anything that carries the power of football, perhaps music, I don't know. Um, so is that why this can work? Because football can take it to places that other, that other projects couldn't reach? Yeah, football can help, like many things, but we are in football and uh, football is the most popular sport in, in the world. Nearly 100% of the people in the planet love football. Some of them not. But <laughs> <laughs> but so we can do, so we can we can use football for many things. We were uh, we were last year uh, just few streets from here in a very poor area also with the people who were came out from jail and everything. And with football, you know, they have a goal. They have a goal. They can train the kids. And football is an education too. You know, when we started. Football, we have to respect 
our teammates, we have to respect the uh, opposite team, we have to respect the material, we have to respect the fans, we have to respect everybody. It's a kind of education, to, it's a school of life, football. You know? So, um, yeah, it's very important that um, associations like Common Goal does the, the work they do, and, and Common Goal is, yeah, it's, it's, it's unbe uh, unbelievable, and we will try to, to help them as hard as possible. And then I suppose that, that same process is one that you go through as well, the, the, the sense that you, you can reach places you wouldn't otherwise reach, that football opens doors for you, that football gives you, as you said at the start, a platform maybe to make a point that you wouldn't perhaps otherwise be in a position to do, to, to be able to make a, a real difference and have an impact. Well, I think, you know, footballers are um, brands in ourselves. You know, if you look at the kind of, the, the number of people that follow us on social media alone, um, we have as big a reach as some newspapers. We have a bigger reach as some TV um, broadcasters. <laughs> people listen to footballers. People want to know what footballers are going to say. People follow what we do. Um, so that platform alone, just as an individual is powerful, but as a collective is even more, if, even more powerful. And so for me, one thing I really want to do with Common Goal is engage with decision makers yeah. who, you know, without being a footballer, they wouldn't want to probably talk to any Luco. Do you know what I mean? But because I'm a footballer who's done what I've done with, along with other footballers, we can have that kind of conversation. So one thing I'm really excited about um, in, the, in the coming weeks, Common Goal uh, organizing an event, um, coffees with the president, uh, with the UEFA president. And it's being able to have that one-to-one -one conversation with decision makers and saying, what are you doing about racism in the game? What are you doing about all of these things that are affecting society as well? Um, that's something that I wouldn't have dreamed of being able to do growing up. You know, I was just a kid that played football in Birmingham. Because of being part of professional football, I'm now able to do that. So it's really super powerful, not just for players, but for, for people in society and for people in the game that actually make decisions as well. But that power is something that you, you have to embrace. I mean, a lot of footballers yeah. don't necessarily want to embrace that power. They don't necessarily want to take that kind of risk. Why is it that you do? I mean, wh why, why not take the easy route and not say anything and hide and not run the risk of, 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 of as you say, of, of perhaps putting backs out? Why, what is it that, that makes it worthwhile from your point of view? I mean, I think some of it's accidental. You know, I've not always been the person that, um, you know, wants to kind of put my neck on the line and, and say things that some people may not agree with. Um, but I've always been somebody that likes to speak on behalf of the team or likes to address something that collectively might be said in the dressing room that nobody wants to say, but let's push, push any to say it. But I think fundamentally, I don't want to be able to look back on my career and say, well, I scored a lot of goals and, you know, the fans liked me and that's it. You know, what else did you do? What else did you do to use that power and use that platform, as I said, to affect, and you can't change everything, but what you can do, you have to try and embrace it, you have to try and do. And not everybody can do it. Not, you're not, you know, some of us are shy, some of us are extrovert, some of us are introvert. But I think for the people who, for the players that recognize who they can engage, we have to try and, and do that. So I just want to have a legacy that, that people can say, when any was playing, she tried to address some of these issues that affected all a lot of people as you say you know it's about addressing issues and using that platform obviously Eric you've done that through, throughout your career but I imagine you've played with plenty of footballers who didn't want to say anything who didn't want to speak out who didn't want to cause problems either for themselves or perhaps for for power brokers as I said to you before it's uh, what we expect from the player is to play well and to to say things about the society, the politics and everything, it puts even more pressure on them. So I can understand that sometimes the, the, the players don't, don't want to speak and want to be concentrated only on the game because it's even more pressure, more pressure on Agnola, on uh, Megan, uh, on, on many, some players who does this, this kind of thing. Some can handle this kind of pressure, some uh, it's just, as a human being, I have, I have to, 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 to tell what I think about and uh, try to improve things around me, 
not, not only me, you know. We all, in football, most of the players come from poor area and uh, most of them forgot for where they come from. Uh, I think it's important uh, to, uh, yeah, not, not forget where, where we come from and think about the, the, the world we are around. But my, 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 par my parents, I, w I was lucky to try to help us to observe the world and to, to see things around, uh, around us. You know, uh, the good things, the bad things, the, the nice light, nice colors, uh, the, the problem in the society, the problem everywhere. But maybe it's not the kind of thing we can see in, in some families. Now you have parents that speak more to their kids about fame and money than the passion for the game. Uh, yeah, it's, it's why it's, it's very important to have this kind of a player, an association, try to... to to do the balance, you know. And where does Maybe, it go now, Jürgen? Yeah. I mean, from, from here, where, where does it go? Particularly with, with the UN sustainability plans, where, where, where does this go next? Yeah, obviously, um, in the next step, we want to involve also the fans, not obviously pledging more money into the game, but, but actually find a way to, for them to also participate in that probably biggest team we have on earth to actually change things. I just wanted to come back on, to, on the thing you mentioned that at the end. Um, there's obviously Megan Rapinoe, she showed probably like during the, the Female World yeah. Cup how it goes hand in hand where you can actually stand for something and perform at the same time and actually become world champion, best player of the tournament and, and golden boot. And the same applies to a club in, in Denmark who has joined Common Goal, FC North Schelland, who actually builds his whole philosophy on a better person becomes a better player so purpose in a player's life actually takes pressure away from players on the field so i think there's a lot to talk about here right we are out of time but one last message maybe eric what would be the message for football stakeholders from your point of view to be involved i suppose what would you say to other players sorry what would you say to other players what would your message be to football stakeholders now to the players what yeah to players to be involved in this project i suppose ah you know, we are what we are, we, wa we want or we don't want, uh, but for sure we have the power to help each other. And that after it's a decision of each other. Uh, yeah, we are here to, to try to, uh, to promote this kind of idea, but we see. We see we cannot force the, you know, we, know, we are not in a dic dictatorship. You know? Thank you. Everybody is free. Uh, as yeah, as free as possible. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think that is all we've got time for. So thank you both to Eni, to Eric and to Jürgen. Mm.